G'day mates, in today's video I want to kick off talking about all the action from today's FNCS qualifiers, the last chance for a lot of these big teams to skip semi-finals and go straight through to grand finals. One of those teams was Clicks and Day who started off shaky but closed it out with an absolutely ridiculous performance. We had Acorn and Edgy dominating NA despite no longer having the tilted blimp. We had Saved and Yapco needing a big performance to even make it to semis and again I want to talk about exactly who made it to semi-finals and who didn't because a lot of you guys are still confused on which teams are out of FNCS and which teams are still in. Also, the Ali A skin got revealed today. It is incredibly clean, but he also announced a tournament where you guys can win the entire bundle for free. So I want to cover all the details on that to make sure you guys don't miss out. There's a lot to talk about. Let's just jump into it. In case you guys somehow missed it and you seriously missed out, it was super exciting. Today was the last chance for a lot of these teams to qualify into either semifinals or if they came top five, skip semifinals and go straight to grand finals. And with some big teams like Clicks and Day, there was a lot of pressure on the line. I'll talk about exactly who made it into heats and semifinals in a second, but let's talk about those teams that made top five. Kicking off with NA East, we had Acorn and Edgy absolutely dominate today, getting 40 points over second, finishing on 237 points six matches, one win with an average elims of five and an average placement of 4.83. In set lobbies, they played so phenomenally well. And you got to remember, Acorn and Edgy are a tilted team. This was with the tilted blimp going down. This means a lot of things, especially for you guys who keep saying Benji and Savage should switch the drop spot because now without blimp, tilted is even more terrible. If you have half of tilted to yourself, in this case, Acorn and Edgy had the north side of tilted, you can absolutely pop off, especially with the vehicles. Now, remember, vehicles are gone in two days, though. So we're going to have to see if Benji Savage teams like Acorn Edgy teams that are still planning to go to Tilted will be able to do as well without the IO cars. But with the IO cars, Acorn and Edgy were looking absolutely disgusting today. In second place, we had Quanti and Larson dropping at the Fortress. That Mythic is very, very strong. There is a lot of loot on that spot. It's no surprise that Peterbot also did phenomenally well there when he was dropping Fortress. I believe Peterbot's actually talking about no loot longer going Fortress in the grand finals because he doesn't want to have to 50-50 now knowing the Quanti and Larson are guaranteed into the grand finals. Then we had the big boys Day and Clicks in third place on 179. A lot of pressure on them to clutch up. And after their first game, there was even more pressure. If you watched it all today, Clicks, uh, Day really wanted to stream. Clicks wasn't really feeling it. Day made Clicks agree that if they didn't do well in their first game, they would end their streams and they would focus up. And if you look at the match history, that's exactly what happened is zero elim 43rd in their first game day unfortunately got a little bit aggressive pushed pushed fast as a solo went down clicks managed to reboot him but the time spent on that meant they got held in zone and they went down after that though they came back with a vengeance a six elim fourth and a 10 elim second shot them right back up on the leaderboard they unfortunately had two games that weren't terrible a four elim 21st and a five elim 23rd were looking real good going into the last game they just needed about 10 20 points to make sure they secured it and they got a seven elim ninth putting them top three and straight through to grand finals so no semi-final stress for either of these guys and it was interesting watching them today as well clicks is absolutely without a doubt in my opinion one of the best players in the world right now and that's not just jumping on the clicks bandwagon because it's clicks he is actually playing so phenomenally well right now and if you've watched any of the games whether on my stream or in clicks stream you can't argue that you would have to be one of the biggest clicks haters in the world to not admit how much better clicks has gotten i'm not i'm not saying day through today day definitely did not play to his top potential but clicks absolutely did if day dials in and plays his maximum potential alongside click the way clicks is playing right now they are very much a favorite to win grand finals the thing that scares me the most is they are not running burst rifles at all they are running shotgun smg almost every game which means they have to get their surge through taking early fights the joneses is not a great spot to get surge from by getting early positioning and setting up on mountains but relying on a straight up box fight to get your surge every game is very scary but when you're winning the majority of those box fights and it's working i mean roll with it that's how day has won previous fnss in the past miro reverse 2k and day always struggled to get their surge at range but they almost always just took straight 3v3s and won them so if it's working let it ride see how you go remember they also have been getting a, uh, the taxi occasionally at jones not 100 percent spawn rate but is there sometimes but when the cars are taken out they're a team that is going to be affected i believe the least 
pleased by this because they've never really used the car even when they get it. So I'm excited to see how they go in grand finals. Our last spot went to Joji and Rokane and huge shout out to Rokane. Clutched up massive in the last game with a five Elim second place. He was solo since before rotating zones. So he got a five Elim second completely on his own, clutching up the top five. And then we had Asian Jeff and Oliver OG. Now again, shout out to Asian Jeff though. In their second last game, same thing happened. OG went down early and Jeff clutched up a seven Elim four. So really, really good showing from all five of these teams. Joji Rokane obviously dropping Rocky. One of my underrated picks to take home FNCS this season. They left it to the last week to qualify, but I'm really, really proud of them. OG and Jeff dropping on that really far E split next to Jones is actually dropping very, very close to Clicks and Day. Jeff and OG have been a team that have broken up and reformed a lot in the past, but a huge, huge showing for them gets them in the top five. And I know they have a lot of fans. Very happy to see it. We had Danny, Bad Bloom, and Clue just miss out. Spade and Chimp, our last season FNCS runner-ups, also just missing out. Then we had Creo and Vert, Nosh and Nut, and Qua and Tabs G. Now, Nosh and Nut showed a lot of brilliance at the very start. They got a six Elim win in their first game, a four Elim eighth in their second game, and then a two Elim fourth in their last game. They're a very, very good team when they get high ground and that's going back to their trios when they used to play together. If they get high ground, they dominate. But they did miss out today, but I think they got a very good chance in semifinals. Then we had Qua and Tabsji closing it out in 10th place. Moving on to EU, we got to see how first performance of Hellfire and Scram, mostly uncontested. They were contested a few games, but not every single game like we're used to seeing. They got a first place on 194.6 matches, no win, but really consistent Elims and an average placement of 9.17. In second place, we had Vina and Aqua. Absolutely no surprise to see them up the top. We almost all knew if they didn't split as teammates by the time Grand Finals came around, they were going to make Grand Finals. It was just a matter of when. They they have a ridiculous match history. It doesn't really show their points as much as it should do it justice. They had two games they went down in 50th place. The first team to go down on spawn that was at the hands of Trip and Thomas. Trip and Thomas didn't actually drop on them every single game though. I believe two or three games they went Coney to try their luck. They didn't have any luck at Coney and then came back. But what it does show is whether they're contested or uncontested. If Vino and Aqua make it off spawn, they absolutely dominate. Their match history is insane. Five Elim second, nine Elim win, one Elim sixth, and a seven Elim fourth. But obviously in grand finals, there's a much higher chance they're going to be contested by Tayson and Chappix, it looks like. And if Tripp and Thomas can make it out of heats, they'll probably get contested by them too. I don't even know at this point. Surely all three of them don't end up going South Covert. But the problem we see is whichever one of them makes it out of that fight almost always goes on to top five or top three. So that's what keeps them going. It keeps them wanting to take this spawn fight. But in a 12 game format, they're going to have to win way too many times than what you can imagine with the caliber of teams dropping on them. So we'll have to see how Grand Finals plays. I don't know at this point if the beef on social media is actually real between these two or they're just that volatile when they play together. But whatever it is, it's working. We had Nebs and Kinzel come in third. They're following in the footsteps of Acorn and Edgy out of Northside Tilted, proving again they don't need the blimp to qualify, playing really, really well even without it. We had Rifle Marine in fourth place, uh, borrowing the Kami split. Now that Kami and Seti are already in Grand Finals, finding great success with that one as well. Then we had Saban and Yapko, and this one's interesting because they didn't actually have a lot of series points. So Saban and Yapko really, really needed us to qualify because if they didn't get a top 10, I think it was, or no, potentially a top 28, they were missing out on heats altogether. So a top five for them, getting them straight into grand finals was absolutely massive. A lot of people were super hyped to get behind them and watch that one. Eye drop and jerky, and this one pains me. They've come sixth and seventh in two of the qualifiers now, and it came down to a 16, 16 Elim win in their last game to just miss out. That is the highest point game I've seen on any of the major regions. Two more Elims and they would have qualified, but I have not watched a set lobby yet where I drop and jerky have not won at least one game. So when they've got 17 games of semifinals in which if they won any of them, they go straight through to grands, they're going to be completely fine. Speaking of teams who really needed to place here, we had Glubshi and Frey. They were in a similar situation to Save 
even in Yapco, but even worse, they needed a really high placement just to make any of the heats, let alone the first heat. I believe when we look at the actual leaderboard of who's playing in heats in a second, I think they didn't make the first heat. I think it's going to come down to third heat for them, but they still managed to clutch it up with a seventh place. Really big from them. Then we had Kroggy and Zroggy. Now, I think this is uh, Kovacs and Zrox. I think it is in eighth place here, just missing out. Floki and Clement in ninth. And then we had Cosmo and Jay in 10th. But that top five on EU is looking really stacked going straight into Grants. Moving on over to NA West. In first place, we had Source and Wale finishing on 166 points, way closer of a leaderboard on NA West. On the back of three really big games, a five Elim seventh, 11 Elim second, and six Elim win for them. We had Bacon and Zooks in second on 164, just missing out by two points, but still qualifying. Midi and Kabu in third. And again, if you've been watching any of my streams, you know me and Midi have been playing a whole bunch of arena and the training weights are in full effect. I'm just that good at anchoring pro players that when they play without me, they just go on to pop off. So I'm really, really proud of Mini for cl clutching this one up. Then we had uh, Scissor and Zinx in fourth and Zio and Poyo in fifth. Now you'll notice there is no Arkham and Epic Whale on that list. Arkham and Epic Whale are actually in 35th place. They are now being contested every single game at Coney by the team one beneath them on the leaderboard, Z Scary and Zays. And unfortunately for them, Z Scary's team is making it more of like a box fight in the buildings. It's really dragging out. So even if they do manage to take them out, they often end up getting third party and just neither of them are doing well. It's unfortunate to see, especially because if you guys haven't been paying attention, Arkham and Epic Whale did have a very good chance to qualify first week uncontested and they, choose, they chose to actually start W King and throwing their games because they wanted to play out the rest of the qualifiers. We did have Epic Whale tweet out today that maybe it's a cheeky strategy. He tweeted out 200 IQ playing heats for no car practice and even though I don't think that's 100% the case, I'm sure he would have tried to qualify if he could. It's not a terrible point. Like I've said, the cars are being removed and a lot of these teams who have qualified straight to grands aren't going to get any practice without the vehicles outside of maybe a duo cash cup final which just isn't the same level as fncs so it might not be a totally bad thing i didn't include this in yesterday's video because i was recording it before na west even finished but we had noah w plays and typical gamer make it into the set lobbies they came in 28th overall they were contested on the south side of sleepy they managed a three elim eighth and a six elim fourth out of their games but unfortunately three of their games they went down on spawn around sleepy but i've really got to take my hat off and commend typical gamer he's not just a content creator who's being dragged through endgame by a pro noah is phenomenal but tg is holding his own i'm watching them play he's finding drop down refreshes he's getting really really good angles he's rotating he's taking over topping noah is a demon don't get me wrong but tg placing top 15 yesterday to make it to the set lobbies is doing so incredibly well while still Still making casual pub content he's still got a partner and a life outside of this just i've really got to take my hat off to tg and just say he's doing so incredibly well right now in competitive outside of that one we did have jagveer and chris just missing out haritos and kytrex vanillas and wavy jacob is awesome seeing one of the ogs still kicking we have baka and delta and then sedna and physics like I talked about earlier in the video, we do now know who's made semifinals. And if you guys want to find out for yourself, go to kinchanalytics.com slash FNCS. I'll put a link in the description down below. Kinch Analytics is amazing. He does a whole bunch of really cool stuff for the community. And he has the full series point leaderboard updated because the Epic Games one takes a while to update. And all you've got to do is just, you can see already who's auto qualified for whatever region you're looking at. And then all you do is go top 50 from that is going to be in the first semifinal. Then you've got top 61 is going to be in the second semifinal. And then top 73 is going to be in the final one after that as well. So at the moment, you can see whichever team you want, how many semifinals they're going to play. All the good teams and the ones who've done really well are going to have the advantage of playing all three semifinals. So that means five games on Friday, six games on Saturday, six games on Sunday. And all they've got to do is get one win in any of those 17 games or come top six in any of the separate semifinals. So you see now why it's so important to at least be top 50 because then you get to play out maximum of all the heats and semifinals i will do a proper video breaking down exactly who made heats and semifinals but i want to do that once the drop spot maps have come out so i can talk about who's dropping where who's going up against who what are we going to watch and all that kind of stuff but i wanted to let you guys know in case you wanted to check for your favorite pro there is a link where you can go and do so but i will make an actual proper video breaking all that down in the next few days if you just want to wait i promise you it's coming really really soon 
You guys probably already saw this, but I talked about it in yesterday's video. We did get the Alie skin reveal today, the next Icon series skin. And I'm not going to lie, this is a super clean skin. I absolutely love the Chica skin and the story behind it honestly made me tear up a little bit. If you guys haven't seen Chica's story of the Battle Bus video, you have to go watch it. I've loved Chica for a really long time now. I have not known how insane her backstory was, but the Alie skin has gone in a bit different of a direction. It's just really, really cool looking. It has so many different variants and styles and I love that Alie has got the more natural kind of Alie feeling vibe for the first main styles but then as you go on you pretty much get what looks like just a super cool like superhero Iron Man kind of vibe going on it just looks really really clean and the main thing you guys can win it there is an Alie Cup duo that's going to be taking place on May 18th it is a duo cup of no building it is zero build I've talked about this a few times and I fully understand why they do no build for these tournaments it's because most of the uh, people who follow these more casual content creators don't want to play the full sweaty normal tournaments with builds it's more likely they're going to enjoy a no building tournament it's more likely they're going to get the skin so i fully agree with them doing a no build cup a lot of you guys are still really enjoying the no build cup so make sure you guys are playing the format looks pretty cool top 25 you're gonna get 25 points for the win each elim is worth one depending on the region you're in you're gonna win the skin top 800 on na east are gonna walk away with it top 1200 on eu remember that's duos so quite a few people are gonna walk away with the skin and i I did absolutely love, I said in yesterday's video, there was only two ways I was going to be happy with the emote. It was either going to be a Diplodocalus reference or a super slow 360. And it is just that. It is a Diplodocalus reference. Like I said, it's not just the skin you're going to get. It's the emote. It's a gun wrap. It's a back bling. It's a pickaxe. It's a glider. It is the entire set. And again, huge congrats to Alie for getting a skin and making it ridiculously clean. Like I'm going to be using this. I just am. All right, guys, that does it for another video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please chuck a like on it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next one.